This week on Dive Vibe, I'm going to share my favorite tips and tricks for the Kiss Sidewinder. So don't go anywhere. I got a nice quick one for you guys this week. I've been getting a lot of traffic on the channel from people watching my video about the, the rebreather I dive, the Kiss Sidewinder. I built it up this weekend with the intention of going diving and then I had a scooter problem. I didn't end up going diving. But since I already have the rebreather set up, I just wanted to talk about a few tips and tricks that I picked up over my time diving this unit. And maybe some of these will be helpful to you. I tried to pick things that would be helpful to all different types of divers because it's not just cave divers using this thing. I'm very often doing trimix dives and it is pretty much my primary unit. Whenever I go out scootering with Air Diluent to try to scope out a new cool dive site, maybe a good spot to go deep, um, I take this, I take my scooter, Air Diluent, uh, about 80 cubic feet of bailout gas, 240s, and it's, it's nice, it's streamlined, it's quick and easy. But if you want to know why the Kiss Sidewinder is a great ray breather, check out the video that I made about that. I'll put a link up there. Otherwise, I'm gonna get into it. I'm, I've got about three tips that I think will apply to a lot of people. And then if you're still hungry for more info after that, you can stick around and I'm gonna go through my configuration on this unit a little bit. But let's get started. Number one, hose routing on this thing is kind of weird because the your body is basically the frame for the rebreather or your BCD is basically the frame for a rebreather rather than rebreathers that normally have some kind of you know frame like a JJ or an inspo that has a big box or there's all of them, Revo. They all have some kind of frame that holds the whole unit together. What holds this together is the BCD and then your body gives it rigidity. So what do you do with the hoses? It's not like there's like you can zip tie hoses to yourself to keep them in place or add some kind of something to maintain it. Well, you're gonna to wanna to use the BCD. And one thing that I think is pretty nice, I've always had issues with the hoses coming out of the first stage where they attach to the O2 regulator, kind of being in the way and being a potential snag hazard. And I kind of wanted to tighten that up. So what I did was I came back in here and I ran between my butt pad here and the drop D ring, I've got a little strap of one inch webbing. You could use two inch webbing. This just happens to be what I had and it's gotten kind of loose. You can make it tighter, but basically you just push this together and the loop will widen up and then you can fit the first stage through that strap. And it doesn't look like it does much now, but when I'm actually wearing the unit, it does a lot to streamline everything. So big fan of this. And full disclosure, I'm pretty sure I picked this idea up from a photo on Patrick Woodman's Facebook page. I think he had, I think he's doing something, something similar. I just saw that he had his hoses routed through there and I was like, oh, that seems like a good idea. So then I gave it a shot and really liked it. So thanks for that, Patrick. All right, number two, the O2 bottle on this thing. Like I said, there's no frame for this rebreather to be attached to. It's just the BCD. So things can tend to be kind of floppy if you don't tighten them up. Tighten them up. So one of the things for me, especially when I first started diving this unit, I was like, so we've got to do something with the O2 bottle. It's constantly lifting up. It flops around all over the place. It was just a bad way to attach it with the two bolt snaps. If you're still doing that, I highly recommend that you look at something like this because this is just as fast, in my opinion, to get it on there and it's way more stable. And I don't have to worry about the butt of the tank wanting to float up, even with an aluminum 13. This is a steel tank, so I don't really have to worry about that all that much, but it, they still do it. They still you know, float up in the tail. I mean, I'm a big guy. I already got a lot of junk in the trunk. I don't need anything else flopping around back there because I am dummy thick. So these straps, these are the answer in my opinion. It keeps the tank in trim, keeps it nice and streamlined. It's easy, fast, and they're not very expensive. You can get all kinds of different types of straps. Ed Sorensen sells some on his uh, website, Cave Adventures. I could put a link in the description for those. And then I had a pair of those and I kind of wore them out. It might've been the fact that I tend to abuse gear, but I was looking for something a little bit more robust and something a little more grippy. And I found these Argon bottle retention straps from Subgravity. And I'll put a link for those because these things are awesome. 
I've recommended them to all my buddies, some of my students, and the ones that have picked them up have been super duper happy with them. So I highly recommend these Subgravity Argon bottle straps as a solution to keep your O2 bottle reined in. <laughs> Let's talk about the SPG, specifically the one for the oxygen first stage to tell you how much oxygen you have left. This is quite controversial. I've seen a lot of different opinions. I have what I think is a pretty good reason for why I run a standard gauge and not a button gauge or a transmitter or even nothing at all. There's really not a whole lot of good ways. You can run it straight up and clip it to your shoulder D-ring. You can try and tuck it somewhere. But what I came up with, since I have my inflator running across my body from left to right, I decided to run my SPG across my body right to left underneath the inflator. So I can still get to the inflator. I can still unclip it and get it out of the way if I need to. I can still move the gauge and get it out of the way if I need to, but it keeps it nice and streamlined. And then I just use a little bit of bungee on a bolt snap so that I can still move. It doesn't compress my chest. When I breathe, it'll stretch with me, but it stays tight and up close against my body. And that works well for me, and well enough that I'm not worried about getting rid of it anytime soon. Now, I wouldn't recommend this at all if you're doing really grindy caves because you're, you're just gonna be grinding your stuff up. It would be nice to run a transmitter because I typically dive a nerd. The nerd is right up in front of my face. It's really nice. I'd love to have my, my oxygen pressure in there, but with a transmitter, you don't really get the connectivity when the transmitter's down here on the first stage and your nerd is way up there. It just doesn't connect very well. I know people have had success with a Perdix, but so far I've not seen a nerd that can connect from the nerd back to the transmitter, back behind your butt. So this, in my opinion, is the best solution. It's also a much cheaper solution, but I try not to think about my rebreather configuration in terms of money, because it's already expensive. What's, you know, a few hundred dollars more or something to make it dive exactly how I want it to. I want to take a closer look at where the counter lung connects to the scrubber right here. When you buy one of these, you have this, this cert clip that holds the counter lung in place. And normally when you get it, it has a little piece of line, a little piece of string that's attaching the cert clip to this bolt snap right here so you don't lose it, which is nice because you don't want to lose it. Now when people were diving these with the Hollis SMS 75 all the time, there was no issue with that little cord being there because the BCD really kind of covered it up very well. Now that we're diving Katana 2s, it's actually a little bit more exposed and that string, you can actually see it when someone's diving. If they don't make any kind of adjustments, you can see that little string hanging out. So it's definitely a bit of a snag hazard and you wouldn't want that clip to come out while you're diving because you could flood your unit and that would be bad. So what me and my buddy Joe came up with is we use a little bit of bungee. We make a little loop and we just clamp it underneath the, the hose clamp right here and a little knot on the end just to make sure it doesn't come out. Two knots actually. And what you do is you just take this bungee and throw it over there and then put your Kind of lung in there, and then you just slide your clip in like normal. And now this is much more, much closer, much less likely to snag on stuff. And it actually, it's the bungee is actually pulling the clip and holding it in. So I really like this, either this or just nothing attached to the circ clip because you don't want something that makes it really easy to pull that thing out. You want to be able to disassemble at the end of the dive but you definitely don't want that coming out while you're diving. That would be bad. All right, so let's go top to bottom. A lot of people have a lot of different customizations that they do with the Sidewinder. It's actually uh, sort of necessary to get it set up. When you get sent one of these in the mail, they don't send you everything. They don't send you a BCD, so you're gonna be figuring out your own BCD. They don't send you the oxygen MAV that gets sent to your instructor. You know, they just sent you some hoses, <laughs> some, some regs, some, some loop hoses, a DSV or a BOV, whatever you want. So there's a lot of customization to be done. So I'm just gonna talk through mine. So I use a steel tank for my O2. I like that. I don't want to use the aluminum tank because, you know, it's light. It, it's kind of floaty. Even with these cool tank straps, it still wants to kind of float up a little bit, but it, it's acceptable. Like I don't have a problem using it, but I prefer the steel. I've got the, the tank straps like I was talking about. And then as far as my BCD goes, I'm using a Hollis Katana 2. Uh, nothing too crazy about that. I swapped out the bolt snap on the belly band for one of these uh, Sump UK knockoffs. 
These things are nice, but if you like to clip this to your shoulder so that it stays out of the way, this doesn't really do that all that well, I'm sure. Uh, I don't ever really have that problem, but some people may. I know a lot of people that like to clip this to their shoulder D-ring so they don't lose it when they're putting it on. But on the, on the Katana, the only real customizations that I've done are this Dive Soft quick release buckle. And man, let me tell you, this thing, you know that with uh, Oprah's favorite things? This is one of Zach's favorite things. I love this buckle. It's incredibly satisfying to use. They used to be a lot cheaper. They've gotten really expensive. But you know what? If you've got an extra $110 or whatever it is, treat yourself. These are really nice, especially if you are a professional or something like that and you're always getting in and out of your gear. Um, I run a stubby little Aqualung knife on my waist. I like, I'm a big fan of having my knives in two different spots so that I can get to them, you know, if I'm wedged into something or something like that. So one here, one up here. This one's actually nice. This little sheath thing is from uh, Chipola Divers. Chipola Divers uh, sold these for a while. They're just molded Kydex. So if you have any experience molding Kydex, you can get that and a little bit of Velcro. And you can make one of these yourself, super easy. Um, I also modeled one of these for 3D printing. So typically I give out my 3D printer files on my Patreon. If anybody wants an STL to print one of these things out, I can send you one. It's also a fun little project to do on your own if you're trying to learn 3D printing. You might give it a shot trying to make it on your own and if you have trouble, use mine. My counter lung here in the normal spot, the canisters are clipped to the normal connection points on the Katana. I don't do anything, anything weird there. I am using a a Shearwater Nerd, uh, just a single computer. And the reason I do that is because you can, if you're using two computers, you can actually have issues if one of the computers dies, then it can throw off the calibration for the other computer. You're not getting accurate information. So I prefer to just keep one computer and then run another computer off board for a backup. I've got the Nerd cable running through the loop host protector here, and then it terminates at the bottom of that. And I have a petrol length Fisher cable that I've got running through my bungees down here and through a little quick link down here just to take up the slack. And it also does a good job of kind of allowing my rebreather loop to move. It makes it to where the, uh, the nerd cable isn't pulling on me so much. So I kind of like running it that way. I am using just a regular old SPG. Like I was saying before, I think this is something like a 24 inch hose, pretty short. And then I have the, the dual button map, normal CMF KISS MAV. I like this configuration. I plumb this into my, my left side tank and that's basically all I have to plumb in when I get in other than my, my inflator. I've got my, my ADV plugged. I don't mind the, the KISS ADV so much. It doesn't really bother me, but I did mind how much stuff I was having to connect up in the water. And I usually didn't use the ADV anyway. I usually used my manual Dillman valve. So I just decided to double down on that and keep that plugged. There's a bunch of other good reasons to not use an ADV. A lot of people have problems with them free flowing. It hasn't happened to me, but it, it could happen. Also, not having an ADV means that when your loop volume drops, it's a nice reminder to check your PO2 and maybe add some. Most of the time when your loop volume drops and you've been staying at the same depth, it means you've metabolized some of the oxygen in the loop and you need to add some more. That's not something you should plan on, but it's a nice little reminder, a nice little fail safe just to make sure. It's not the reason why I do it, but I don't mind it. So that's cool. And almost done. I do have the Light Monkey towers on here just because I kind of like them a little bit better than the, the Kiss ones. They're easier to use. They feel a little bit more secure. Not to say there's anything wrong with the KISS ones. If you like your, your KISS towers on the where the loop connects to the heads, that's fine. I'm not knocking it. I just like these. And they're quite expensive, so I wouldn't recommend just going out and buying them. If they give you a warm and fuzzy like they give me, then I recommend them. They're extremely well made. Now, I am using a different DSV. I'm not using the KISS DSV. I'm using the Gollum Gear uh, Shrimp DSV. I like this thing, it's lightweight. These bayonet fittings are killer. They're so quick and easy and very tough, strong. It's very affirmative. It gives you a lot of confidence that it's not going to like come undone. 
It's also very easy to use. This is really easy to remember for me because this is just a ball valve. So up and down means the loop is closed, right? But then when it's turned because the air is going this way and this is in line with that, it's just, it, for me, it makes sense in my head that this is, the loop is open and I'm breathing closed circuit. So that's nice. As far as a mount goes, for my Nerd, I've got something that I 3D printed. I custom modeled this. I used some of the hardware from the Shearwater kit, mounting kit, but I kind of made my own design. And I like this, I like this a lot. If anybody wants it, I don't want to distribute this too much though, so I'll probably just make it available to my patrons or my members because Tony Land is out there and he's got a really nice mount that he sells on Shapeways. They're very durable. They're not very expensive and they work super well. So if you're not wanting to like 3D print something yourself, I'd highly recommend that you just go check his mount out and I'll put a link in the description. Well, that's it. Uh, hopefully I answered all the questions you have, but if I didn't, let me know in the comments. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it or, or learned something. If you did, you know the drill. I appreciate you watching though. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've got any, any tips or tricks that you like with your Sidewinder. I'd love to hear it. I always love talking to you guys. So please, yeah, leave me a comment. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Anyway, thanks for diving with me today and I'll see you in the water. Hey. Beat by Apollo, stop at New Apollos. Copper handy sour, and I'm puffing.